Welcome back to Titans to another SPC's EMS lecture series for our EMT and paramedic programs. Today we are going to be talking about adenosine. What is adenosine? What does it do? And how we're going to give it to our patients and what we should be prepared for when considering this medication. Now adenosine is the generic name. It could also be known as adenocard, which we have here in the vial. Um, we typically see in our local jurisdiction adenosine uh, packaged as 6 milligrams and 2 mLs. They'll always check your medication. It could be packaged differently. So what is adenosine? So adenosine is an antidysrhythmic commonly used in extreme tachycardias to either convert a rhythm or slow the conduction down long enough to identify an underlying rhythm. If we can identify an underlying rhythm, maybe we use a different uh, medication to assist in the conversion process. How does uh, adenosine work? So adenosine primarily works by slowing the conduction down through our AB node. Now, we know that the electrical pathways in the heart starts at the SA, SA node, travels down to the AV, through the right and left bundles, and then through the Purkinje system. Our target area is the AV node. That's where we want to slow our patient's heart rate down. We also know that when your heart rate is beating, we're going to say for this lecture, we're going to say that we're using SVT as our tachycardia and our heart rate's at 180. If your heart's beating at 180 times a minute, we know that our ventricles cannot completely fill with oxygenated blood to pump to the rest of the body appropriately. So we need to slow that down. I like to use analogies and metaphors. So just like a Corvette going 180 miles an hour, we are not going to be able to sustain that for a long period of time before something breaks. So we need to slow our patient's heart rate down. What are our indications? So our indications are first-line drug for the most forms of stable, regular, narrow, complex SVT, including those involving AV nodal reentry. Now we can also consider for unstable, narrow, complex reentry tachycardia while preparing for cardioversion. And we can also use it as a diagnostic tool for stable, regular, monomorphic, wide, complex tachycardia like VTAC, per Nancy Caroline's Volume 1, 9th edition. Um, what are our contraindications? So our contraindications are any obviously any allergy or known hypersensitivity, second or third AV block, uh, six sinus syndrome, and we're also going to use caution in patients with like COPD or asthma. What are our adverse effects? Um, adverse effects usually include uh, short duration because of adenosine is short half-life. You could have flushing, sweating, dizziness, nervousness, uh, bronchospasm in patients with asthma, and a brief period of a systole or um, near syncopal episode. Interactions. Uh, anytime we use a medication, obviously we've done our rights, we've done our cross checks, we know our indications, contraindications, our interactions with other medications can be prevalent. If somebody's using another stimulant like caffeine or Adderall or something um, that's already can naturally increase their heart rate, we need to use caution with that and review your guidelines for any of the interactions. What's our dose? So now we're ready to prepare to give our patient this medication. Before we give this medication, there's some things we need to consider. So we should have our patient sitting in a chair or on our stretcher, as there are patients that could have a near syncopal episode with this or become dizzy. We want to make sure that they're not going to fall, so we're going to prepare our patient. Um, we are going to have an IV or IO in place. Um, we typically want to use the IV access location as close as we can to the heart because this is such a short-acting medication. We're going to have an IV bag running and a 10cc flush ready to go. Because we're working on the chronotropic dr dromotropic effects, we know that chronotropic is works, I like to think of it like a clock. We're trying to affect the patient's heart rate. And dromotropic is for the electrical uh, conductivity. So that's how it's going to work. So we've drawn up our medication. Say we have six milligrams and two mLs. We're going to draw up the entirety of the two mLs. We're going to talk to our patient. We're also going to hit print on our monitor. This is going to help you out because as we slow the heart rate down with this medication, now we have a full print and we can uh, under underlying rhythms can be identified once it slows down enough for us to see. So 
we're going to start with six milligrams. This is going to be a fast IV push over one to three seconds, followed by a 10 cc flush. We're going to wait one to two minutes. We're going to reevaluate our patient. We're going to a second dose if it does not convert or slow our patient's uh, heart rate down. We're going to go to 12 milligrams. Same thing, we're still hitting print, we're still following up with a flush, keeping an eye and reevaluating our patient. Still no conversion or slowing down of the heart rate. We're going to go to an additional 12 milligrams. This is going to be your max. 30 milligrams is as much as we can give before we need to consider some other idea. Now, if we have an unstable patient that we don't have time to give this medication to, we've got, you know, we can't do fluids and vagal maneuvers and adenosine, we may have to go right to uh, synchronized cardio version. But we'll talk about synchronized cardio version and tachycardia in another episode. Duration of action, like we just talked about, um, onset and peak are going to be just merely seconds. Um, and then the duration is no more than 10 seconds. Now, talking about special considerations, uh, it's a pregnancy category C. Um, use in pregnant women only if clearly indicated. And then Nancy Caroline also says, continuously monitor the patient's EKG, uh, record a rhythm strip during administration, and it could possibly not be effective in converting AFib, a flutter, uh, VTAC, and should not be administrated, administrated to he hemodynamically unstable patients. That's where we go from our least to our most invasive. We may not have time to draw up and prepare and deliver this medication if they're unstable. We may have to go right to some sort of cardio version. So, adenosine, um, hope this helped, and see you on the next one.